Hey, what is up, guys? This is Chris, and I'm back with more Everyday RC and my Losi 5T. All right, so I don't know. Where do I begin, guys? I just want to give you guys the update on what's going on with the truck. The truck is finally finished. I know it's been a while. It's been about three months since my last video. Been super busy, enjoying the summer. And I hope all of you guys are doing good out there as well. But I'm gonna get right to it. And I'm just going to share with you guys what's been going on in my RC world. And I've been getting in here when I can because I've been super busy and I haven't really been able to enjoy the hobby too much. But I've basically rebuilt the whole entire truck. And this is my original 5T from nine years ago. The truck is nine years old at this point, but this is my 2.0 version of the 5T. So this is what we're looking at for 2021. So I just wanna share everything I did with you guys. I'll try to keep it quick. And um, like I said, I'm just giving you an update on what's been going on in my RC world and I'm super excited. So I guess let's start on the outside. Right, this is the Hemistorm Penta body. Uh, it is a nine panel body and I have run all nine panels for the last few years. And I decided to go with a little bit of a different look. So I took off the fender panels, uh, the four fender panels, and I'm gonna go open wheel. And I'm really liking how it looks right now. So this body was painted a few years ago and uh, didn't have the best experience with the painter that did it, kind of botched it up. And um, along that process, he also lost the four number plates that I had sent him with the body. And I made a video about that a number of years ago. Um, I didn't give the guy's name, but I was just extremely upset about it. And uh, Chris uh, from Hemistorm actually reached out to me and uh, this was a gift that he had painted for me. So these are custom painted, uh, number plates by Chris DeGraff and uh, they're absolutely beautiful. And uh, he always wanted me to put them on here and take a photo of the truck with his panels on there. And I never really had a chance. And honestly, they're so beautiful <laughs> that I really don't wanna run the truck with these on here. I actually plan to get these put in a frame eventually one day, cause just a cool memento and um, just a really simple design, but not easy to, pull off and uh, it just shows how talented Chris is when it comes to painting and uh, you can see all the the lines are all cut out and uh, just just a simple way to display his talents I guess I, I could say definitely not easy to do um, I'm still amazed at how he was able to cut out the uh, the cables for the bridges right there so thin and so neat um, but just a really uh, really cool design really nice gift that he gave me and there actually are when you go open wheel on the penta body there's actually uh two panels that you can put on the back here and chris supplied me with these as well that were lost um just gave them to me clear and i still haven't painted them yet and i'm still debating whether or not i'm going to put them on there i actually kind of like the truck without them um but i did put the caps over there just to give it a nice cleaner look and i did as well go out and get all stainless steel hardware for the body as well. So that kind of gave it a nice updated clean look because the uh, the stock hardware definitely get rusted. Um, so I wanted to go with stainless steel just to make the body pop a little bit more. And yeah, the truck looks sick like this. I love the open wheel design and in the addition with Chris's uh, number plates right there, the truck is just, yeah, everyday RC. Losi 5T 2.0 right here. So that's pretty sick. So, um, and one other thing about, I guess the exterior, or I guess before I pull the body off to show you what I've done to the rest of the truck, let's go over the wheels and tires. So these are Mad Max tires that I had got, and uh, they came with wheels and um, foam inserts. These are the actual stock original tires that came with the trucks. These are Nomads, but I just slipped in these Mad Max. So originally these tires came with these rims and I ran the truck with that 
for many, many years. But unfortunately, what ended up happening was, which I couldn't barely even see, on the inside, you could see this is my uh, steering link. They were so ever so close up in there that they were rubbing on the inside. And I had never noticed that. It never wore completely through, but obviously it was close enough where it was rubbing ever, ever so slightly. So the diameter of those uh, Mad Max wheels are definitely not the same as the original Losi 5T wheels. So what I did was I love these tires. So I took the tires off the Mad Max wheels, mounted them on the original gray Losi 5T wheels and the clearance is perfect now. And then I did away with uh, those bead locks. Those are the Mad Max bead locks. And I put on my um, original that I've had on here for many years. That's why they're a little banged up. But these are silverback bead lock rings, which work really good with the uh, silverback wheel nuts and never had any issues with those at all. So that's pretty much the body and the wheels and tires. And I actually kind of look like the look of the gray wheels with the blue, you know, kind of makes it pop a little bit. And I was debating whether or not these are dyeable plastic. I might have dyed these blue. So I'm thinking about maybe taking these back off again and dyeing these a royal blue, make it pop a little bit, you know? That would be pretty sick. But right now I'm happy with the gray. You know, I think it matches everything really, really nice. Um, so let me get the body off and then I'm just gonna go over everything I did with the truck and then my plan is to start breaking in the brand new engine. All right, guys, this is the truck with the body off and check it out. It's pretty much all brand new from the ground up. Well, the parts are original. A lot of the parts are original. Most of the parts are original, but rebuilt the truck completely from the ground up. Every piece was taken off this truck, cleaned. I replaced whatever needed to get replaced. And you're looking at a brand new platform ready to rock this brand new OBR engine. This is the Zenoa G320 um, modified by O'Neill Brothers, which I am so excited about. Uh, it's got that new 1242 carburetor that they had designed just for them. Uh, it's got the billet crankcase. It's been modified to run on 100 octane fuel and I cannot wait to break this engine in, guys. I am psyched and it's ready to go now. So I'm gonna go out and get my fuel and I will be sure to share all of that with you guys, absolutely. And um, I installed my original Bartolone Big Bore XP pipe right onto the engine. So I've been rocking this exhaust pipe for many years and I love it. Still in good condition. I got some battle scars. I got some dents underneath it, some spots. Oh, back up in there, but that's to be expected with all the jumping I did with this truck. But this truck, uh, this uh, pipe has held up pretty good. Um, I did have it ceramic coated a few years ago, and that's definitely helped with the durability of this pipe, you know? So I'm so excited about that. Um, and I was able to mount up a few, I think just, just one of these uh, upgrades. That's the Dark Soul Vented Clutch Housing. And I went with the, uh, the, the, 22 tooth pinion on there. So I'm gonna go for uh, high top speeds. I have the Integy center differential. And I did redo all the fluids in the truck. So I put 100,000 weight in the center and I put 50 in the front and rear. I replaced all the outdrive cups on the truck. So all the outdrive cups on all the diffs are brand new. All the drive shafts are brand new, six drive shafts. I got my front center differential, uh, my front center drive shaft was replaced, rear center, all the boots were replaced, all four of my front and rear drive shafts were replaced, all the fluids, like I said, all four shocks were completely rebuilt with new boots, and I did 40 weight. And yeah, so everything has been taken apart. And I also shared with you guys, obviously the chassis, can't forget about the chassis, um, wrapped it with an RC Skins chassis wrap, which looks sick on there. Let's see if I can show you the underneath. 
kind of hard to see, but you can see the chassis wrap. Love that. Cleaned up the chassis and stuck it right to the uh, the old chassis. Even with all the battle scars underneath, it still adhered pretty good. And I think that's pretty much it. Most of you guys can see the upgrades, the other upgrades I've had on there for many years. But one thing I really wanted to share with you guys, that it was an experiment that I wanted to try. And if you've made it this far into the video, um, you know, maybe this can help somebody out there. Um, but I was actually going to make a separate video on this. Um, but this is my original gas tank. Okay. This is a nine year old gas tank. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's looking pretty fresh right now, right? So what I did was I have seen this technique done. It's called retro brighting. And basically the main purpose of its use is people that restore old computers from like back in the eighties or old video game systems. And let's say that they were brighter in appearance and now they've yellowed through the years. And it's basically UV damage to the plastics. Um, they do this method called retro brighting where it restores the plastics back to original and it rebrightens them. And it's done with hydrogen peroxide and UV light. So I wanted to see if I could do it on this gas tank. So I did it. I think if I did it again, I would do it a little bit different and maybe I would have got an even better result. But basically, um, I took the original tank. I'm gonna put some side-by-side -side photos. And obviously the inside of the tank gets dyed from the two-stroke fuel that you use. So the inside of the tank was probably affected more than the outside of the tank. Um, but basically I cleaned the tank up and um, I bought this concentrated hydrogen peroxide hair product from Sally's Beauty Supply. I'll put it up on the screen. You can buy it on Amazon, eBay. You can get it on the internet. You can't use regular hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy because it doesn't have a high enough percentage. So this hair product is concentrated hydrogen peroxide. And you basically, I put it inside the tank. I put it inside an aluminum tray. I filled it with this stuff. I wrapped it in saran wrap because you're basically creating like an ozone gas inside there. And you can buy a UV light if you want to. I didn't want to spend the money. So I just simply put it in the sunlight and I left it there for about 36 hours. I left it there for a little bit more than a day. I wanted to let it go a little bit longer. So you can leave it out there for as long as you want. And the longer you leave it out there, the better the results will be. Um, and I can say that it definitely looks better than it did. And it doesn't have that yellow appearance anymore. So it just freshened up the truck. You know, I'm not rebuilding this whole truck and cleaning everything up and I'm still rocking this yellow nine-year-old gas tank. So if anybody out there wanted to try this, I definitely suggest giving it a try. Um, it worked really good. I know you can just go out there and buy a new tank for like 20 bucks, but this is the original tank from this truck. And you know, I wanted to keep this whole truck original. This is all original low products that are on here from back nine years ago. I, I, you know, and there's nothing wrong with the tank. It just yellowed a little bit. So I did it and it worked. So I definitely suggest trying to do it if, if you if you're interested in that you know like i said the product itself was only four dollars a bottle i bought two bottles so they cost me eight dollars still half the price if not a quarter of the price of a new tank and it worked it just freshened it up you know it still got scratches on it you know from where the chassis rubs on there and some sand entering in from the wheels obviously right but you know, some of the spots didn't come out perfect, but overall it made it white again, which is awesome. I redid all my fuel lines and I went with um, these cool looking fuel filters, which I've never used before, but I'm interested to see them. These are the Walbro um, 125529. Um, I forgot what they call these. But these are the fuel filters that I did inside the tank. And basically what these little fins help with is soaking up the gas in the tank. So normally it would just be this part of the fuel filter, but now you have these 
these little fins that help soak up the fuel, especially when the gas is sloshing back and forth, you're jumping. It just always keeps that fuel filter saturated, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, I redid my fuel lines. These are all the old parts. Um, I redid the, the shock boots, stainless steel hardware. These are all the old drive shafts and bearings. You can see, you know, replaced all the out drive cups and they definitely had wear on them. And uh, these are all my old parts. So the only thing that's left is the brake in the engine. I'm gonna be breaking it in and be using Caster 927 because that's what uh, OBR suggests. I'm gonna do everything that OBR suggests on this break in of the engine and running it to give it the best longevity as possible, right? And, um, you know, I'm using the bronze springs on here. I've used these for years. These are the stiffest springs that Losi makes for the truck and they're great for jumping. Um, and I went with a 40 weight as opposed to a 30 weight that was in there before. I still have my shocker wares to put on the shocks. Um, and I love the finished look of those. I just left them off right now, just so you guys could see the shock springs and everything I did to the truck. All right, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to me. Um, absolutely leave a comment leave a like in the comment section below and um i'll be happy to answer any of your questions that you guys have um thanks for watching and making it this long into the video if you have i appreciate it and also if you've made it this long in the video don't forget through the end of this year as always um i do have my sponsors so if you guys want any discounts if you want to pick up any cow rc products or max amps products just go in the description box of my video and i have my discount code right there so i know i have a lot of people that always ask me about that so don't forget to reach out to my sponsors if you want any of those products and that's pretty much it guys i hope to see you guys sooner than later i'm going to start breaking in this engine and hopefully we'll have a running video and i'm going to share all of this i'm going to try my hardest to share all of this with you guys especially the original startup of the engine the break in May not be able to get all the steps in the break-in in a video, but I'll definitely share that experience with you guys. And um, I will hopefully have some running videos up, you know? So that's about it for me today, guys. I hope you guys are all enjoying today. Is If you live in the States, today is Labor Day. So if you're in the States, I hope you guys have a great Labor Day weekend. And that's about it for me today, guys. So I hope you guys are all making it happen in your RC worlds out there. And for now, this is Chris, the Everyday RC Guy, in Lucy 5T Land saying, thanks for watching. Peace.